It's time to be creative in 3D and virtual reality, VR. It's time for Unity. In this video, we're going to continue our Whack-A-Mole VR game in Unity 3D. Something weird happened. I built this game out about two years ago in 2018, and you can see the playlist is here. I have designing the table, I have designing a mole, I have designing the room. I also have coding the game timer, designing the arcade game. So I have all these things. The only issue is I didn't, somehow I didn't upload how to actually hit the moles with the hammer and how to add the menu in. So here I am two years later, I could not find those videos, so I'm going to remake those videos now. I'm also gonna remake this entire thing in the latest Unity, which is Unity 2021. But for now, let's just finish up this project by adding the missing videos that I did from two to two years ago. So here's on the class page, you can see Whack-A-Mole coding the hammer, and this is what it will look like. You can see you're gonna swing the hammer down and up, and the moles are already moving, we coded that before. Here is our two codes that we're going to add in. This is the hammer code script, and this is the player control script, just to simply move the hammer left, right, up and down when you press your arrow keys. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Over here, first off, what we wanna do is, let's organize our stuff. This is a little bit unorganized down here. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna make a folder. Let's call it prefabs and let's move our mole in there and our arcade game in there. Let's make a folder, let's call it scripts and let's move our mole script in there and our this script. So what else over here do we have to? All right, so let's organize the room as well. Let's move the arcade games inside of the room and yeah, that should be good. We have the table, we have the mole container and we have the room and the gold. All right, so now let's add in a hammer. So first off, let's make a empty game object. Let's call it player controller. And inside a player controller, let's just simply do a 3D object and let's do a cylinder. Now you can see that cylinder is way back there because that's where my player controller is. So I'm gonna move my player controller back and move it up. So this, there you go. So this is the actual hammer and we can use our, right here, our scale tool. Let's scale it up and let's make it shorter. And then we have materials down here. So I'm gonna drag black onto that. Now I'm just going to right click and duplicate this. Now this is not gonna be hammer. This is going to be the handle. And let me just bring that out so you can see it. And I'm just gonna add this wood floor texture that we already have and add it on there. Now I'm simply going to scale this in and make it longer. And then now I can use my rotate tool and rotate that down. And this should be for the X 90. So now you can see this is our little hammer. I'm gonna put the handle inside of the hammer like that. That way when I move it, they both move together. What we're really gonna do here is, you can see the, the hammer is down when X is at zero. The hammer's up when X, the rotation is at 90. So all we're really doing is this, we're doing this. And all I'm doing is adding 90, going to 90 and zero. So that's what we want to kind of make. So we're gonna make a hammer script to do that. But before we do that, let's just go ahead and knock out the player controller script, which is a simple script to simply move our guy. And where is our camera at? Our camera is right here. Well, I want to move the camera back and up so we can see everything. So now let's move our player controller up. Let's just kind of play with it. Actually, let's rearrange our screen so we can kind of see better. So I'm going to pull this over here. I'm going to pull this underneath, there we go. That way I don't have to keep going back and forth. My asset store I'll put behind my uh, scene, there we go. So, all right, 
this is what we're seeing down here is your game this is what we're seeing so i want to move this guy uh, is that right yeah let's move him up some and that looks pretty fine to me let's see yeah we'll leave him there and zero yeah we'll leave him there all right so now let's do our player control script so we can come down here to our script folder, right click, create script, C sharp script. I'm going to call it player controller. I'm going to click on my player controller here, and I'm simply going to add the player controller script. So now let's go ahead and open this up. And this is something that we learned from unity create with code how to simply move using the input access horizontal and vertical i'm not actually going to need my start so i'm just going to get rid of that and up here though i'm going to do two slashes for commas i'm going to type in my variables first variable i'm going to need i'm going to just say private float horizontal input and then private float vertical input and then lastly public float speed is equal to 10 f now i should not make this public i really should make this private and then in front of it i can do serialize field and then that will make me able to see it inside of unity so what are we doing inside of update we're going to set our input access which is the keyboard arrows so first i'm going to say horizontal input is equal to input i get access and i'm going to type horizontal make sure you are typing it exactly like me don't put a lowercase h or it will not work then let's do vertical input is equal to input dot get access and type vertical and make sure to put your semicolon at the end all right, now let's just move when the user presses the arrow keys. Really simple here. We're just going to say transform.translate. And this is where it's going to be weird. If you look at my thing, my Z is facing us. Your Z should be facing the opposite way. So when I, it's going to be backwards because my Z, which is forward, it's actually backwards for us. So I built my design in this instance backwards. So my controls are gonna be a little bit backwards. So this is where I'm saying it's gonna be a little bit different. Normally, I'm, I'm gonna do vector three dot right times the horizontal input times time dot delta time times the speed and put my semicolon. So normally, if your Z was forward again it was on that direction let's just come here so you can see so right now this is me looking forward right my z is not you got to kind of move it a little bit see my z is actually backward so my code has to be backward you'll see when you test yours but right now so directly that right should be negative you'll see what i'm talking about in a second but let's just do this so i'm just going to copy that down and here I'm going to say that forward times the vertical input. Now, if I save this, you're going to see what I'm talking about, that my Z direction is backward. So I'm going to have to change this and this. I'm going to make it the opposite. So let's come back over here. Unity compiles. Let's press play. Oh, I have some errors. So let's pull our console into here. The error, and this is a great way to figure out errors. On line 21 at space 28, Unity Engine does not have a definition of Delala. So you can see I messed up really bad by trying to type fast. This should be Delta time. Now let's save that and come back on over here. Unity gets rid of those errors. Now, if I press play, here's my game controller. I'm pushing left and it's moving right. I'm pushing right and it's moving left. I'm pressing up and it's moving back. I'm pressing back and it's moving up. So this is what I'm talking about when my Z direction, if your Z is backwards, you're gonna have to make this code backwards. 
if your Z is forward, so if this blue arrow is in front of you, which is forward, you're fine. Let me show you how to fix it. All you're gonna do, instead of saying vector three dot right, I'm gonna say negative vector three dot right. So it's the opposite. I'm gonna say negative vector three dot forward, which is the opposite. You do not have to do this if your Z, if your forward direction is fine. Mine's is backwards, so I have to say, okay, do the opposite, do the opposite. Let's save this, and now if I press play, you can see this moves fine. Really, really simple. So that's pretty straightforward. Now let's go ahead and get to our hammer. And again, what we're doing is look at the hammer. I'm just going to move this here. I'm saying this for my X rotation. I'm adding a nine. I'm taking an away. So I'm going to 90 to zero, 90 to zero. That's what I want to do. All right. So let's make our script, right? Click create C sharp. Let's call it hammer. And let's add in our hammer scripts. There we go. Now let's open our hammer script. And up here, I'm gonna give myself some space. Let's just say variables. And what I, what variables are we gonna need? I'm need to gonna I'm gonna need to know when the hammer is facing up. So let's make a private bool and I'm going to say hammer is up and true. So when the game starts, our hammer is up. I'm also going to need to know the hammer down angle and the hammer up angle. Well, that's what I'm telling you this is. So right now the hammer is down. The angle for X is zero. When the hammer is up, the angle for X is 90. So that's what we're going to just simply store. And here I'm going to say, I want to say private float hammer down angle is equal to zero. I'm going to say private float hammer up angle is equal to 90. So now what we're dealing with is our rotation. So for rotation, we have to use something called quaternion. And you don't have to get into the details of what it is. Just know that when you're dealing with rotation, you're going to use a quaternion, which is the X, Y, and Z position for rotation. Remember when we do position, we do a vector three. So vector three represents X, Y, and Z. For rotation, it's going to be a quaternion. All right. So here, let's have a quaternion for the hammer down rotation and the hammer up rotation. So we can simply reference that. So I'm gonna say private quaternion like that. And I'm gonna say hammer down rotation. The X angle when the hammer is down. And I'm gonna say private quaternion hammer up rotation. And I'm gonna say X angle when hammer is up. And we already know the angle here is 90. We know the angle here is zero, which we kind of have up here, right? Last thing we're gonna need is, we don't want our hammer to just be down all the time. So like when you swing, it's gonna come automatically back up. So we're gonna make a private float and the hammer down max time. And let's make it like 0 0.25, like a quarter of a second. So max time to swing hammer before moving back up all right so with that that's all the variables that we need and then we can go ahead and just code this out so this time we will wouldn't we will need start and what we're going to do in start is we're going to set our hammer down rotation angle and our hammer up rotation angle that way we can reference it and just simply say the transform dot position is equal to either hammer down rotation or hammer up rotation right so here let's go ahead and do that so hammer down rotation inside of my start is going to be equal to that same word quaternion dot Euler, which is a weird word. Just follow for now. And the first thing I want to do is my hammer down angle. And then my Y is going to be transform dot transform dot rotation dot Y. And my Z is going to be, it's going to say the same, which is transform dot rotation dot Z. So there you go. Actually, let's 
So this is saying, when the game starts, make the hammer down rotation equal to a quaternion, which is just a rotation, using the hammer down angle. The hammer down angle is zero. Use the whatever your Y rotation is, which is zero, and whatever your Z rotation is, which is zero. I'm simply gonna copy this, paste it again, and I'm gonna change this now. Hammer up rotation. So quaternion.euler, instead of saying Homer down, I'm gonna say hammer up, hammer up angle. So this is saying when the game starts, that was weird, that's an error. This is saying when the game starts, make your hammer up rotation angle for X, Y, and Z. A quaternion hammer up angle, the hammer up angle is 90. Use the same Y, use the same Z. So these are the two different rotations that we want to reference if the hammer is up or if the hammer is down. All right, so let's go ahead and scroll down. And we're going to have a bunch of stuff in here. Um, but also we're going to have a swing hammer. So let's first, let's make that swing hammer. Now, we're going to do void. We're going to call it swing hammer. And we have this. And we'll do a little brackets. Now, inside of here, inside of swing hammer, I want to know two things. If the hammer's up and which way to swing it. So I'm going to say bool hammer up. And I'm going to say quaternion hammer hammer rotation. So whenever I call swing hammer, I'm going to pass if the hammer is up. And I'm going to pass the rotation that I want it to do. And we're going to do that inside of here. But we're building this out first. So inside of here, I'm going to set the hammer is up using the hammer up passed in. So I'm going to say hammer is up is equal to hammer up. So if I pass in false, that means the hammer is up is gonna be set to false. If I pass in true, that means the hammer is up will be set to true. That way I can use this one method that we've made or one function we've made to handle swinging up and down. Now, what do we wanna do? We wanna update our rotation, right? Update the hammer rotation. So I'm gonna say transform.rotation is equal to whatever they pass in, the hammer rotation. So I'm gonna say hammer rotation, a semicolon, and don't forget your semicolon up here, and I'll save that. Now, we also wanna do something with the speed. Remember up here, we have the max hammer down time. So when you put the hammer down, after a quarter of a second, it's gonna go back up. So we have to reset that timer down here. So reset the hammer max down timer if the hammer is up. So I'm gonna say if, put my parentheses, hammer is up. And I'm just gonna to go to the next line and we're gonna say hammer down max time is equal to 0.25F. And that's resetting it. So once our hammer goes up, somebody can press space and it'll go down for another 0.25 seconds. If we did not do this, the hammer would stay down, which would look kind of weird. You're just moving around. So that's our swing hammer function. Really simple to build. Now we simply have to do a couple little updates inside of here and we are done with this video. So inside of here, what are we doing? Our game user presses the space bar, swing the hammer. So how do we do that? Very simple. If input dot get key down parentheses we're going to do key code dot space and then there is our brackets inside of here if the hammer is up call swing hammer with the hammer rotation down down here if the hammer is down call swing hammer with hammer rotation up so see these two values up here we're gonna use that and we're gonna pass that over here based on if the hammer is up or not. All right, so here we're gonna say if hammer is up, we're gonna do something. And down here, if the hammer's not up, we're gonna say else. So either the hammer's up or else it's not. Up here, if the hammer is up, all we're gonna do is say swing hammer and we have to pass in some values. So I could just pass in 
the actual values I want, but I want to keep the name so you all can see that. So I'm going to put hammer up and hammer rotation just so it's clear what we're doing here. I'm going to say hammer up colon, and then I'm going to say false. And I'm going to say hammer rotation colon. And what are we passing here is the hammer up. I want to change it to false. So it was up. I want to change it to false. And I also want to put the hammer down. So here's going to say hammer down rotation. Now, same thing goes down here. I'm going to come here, swing hammer. I'm going to say hammer up so we can keep our little parameters down here so you know what's actually happening. So down here, the hammer is down. So when I want to swing the hammer, I want to swing it back up. So here I'm going to pass true and down the hammer rotation now. The hammer is down, I want to move up. So I'm gonna type hammer up rotation. Again, make sure you use your semicolons. I'm used to using other languages which don't require semicolons, so I constantly have to check that. So that is how we're gonna swing the hammer down and up. Now this will work, but again, remember we want the hammer to not stay down, but let's just check that this works. So let's come back over here. And let's press play. We have some errors. It's always good to check. Hammer at line eight, the name true does not exist in the current context. So I'm spelling it like you do in Python, not how you spell it in C sharp. I'm gonna close my player control. I don't need that anymore. See how I typed it up here? This is how you would type it in Python. This is how you type it inside of C sharp. So different languages, once you learn multiple languages, you gotta make sure you're using the right syntax for the right language. So just make sure that, let's save that, come back over here, our error should go away. There we go. Now you can see this, here's a warning on 13, warning the private field hammer down max time is assigned a value that is never used. Yeah, I'm not using it yet. We'll use that in a second. So warnings you don't have to worry about, but errors you do. And we're gonna use that to make sure that the hammer goes down and comes up. So let's check out our thing. If I press space, this should swing. So you can see I'm pressing space. I can also move forward, move left. But here's the thing, see, see how this looks weird? I'm just like moving it. We want to use that max timer. So after a quarter of a second, it goes back up. So that's why, but you can see it does work. It just looks weird if you just have a hammer going like this. Uh moving around. So let's kind of add a quick animation for that. Back to our hammer. And that's gonna get rid of that warning that we had as well. All right, so back up here inside of this, let's only have the hammer down a max of zero point a quarter second. So we're gonna say if the hammer is up, but we don't wanna know if the hammer's up, we wanna know if it's not up. So if the hammer is not up, that means it's down. If the hammer is not up, what do you want to do? We want to do our hammer down max timer. We're going to subtract. Remember that is a quarter of a second. We want to subtract time, that delta time. And if the hammer down max time is less than or equal to zero F, which it will be because it's only a quarter of a second and this is one second. So after one occurrence, it's going to go down. What are we gonna do? We wanna swing the hammers down, we wanna swing it back up. Well, we already know how to swing it back up. It's right here. So we can simply copy this and paste it right there. So this is saying, if the hammer is not up, hammer down minus equals hammer down max time minus equals a second if the hammer is less than that swing the hammer up so it's going to happen every time the hammer is down it's going to move it to be back up all right so let's save that now if we come back over here and let's press play make sure we don't have any errors no errors are good to go so now again i can move around now look, if I press it, see how it comes right back up? I'm pressing it one time, it comes right back up. So there you go. So we are done with this video on swinging the hammer. 
in the next video, what we will do is focus on the score. When you hit something, we'll also add some simple sound effects and add a menu. You can see once the game is over, you can't restart it. And the game kind of automatically restarts. So we're gonna add a menu, add some sound effects and update the score. And we will be done with this little basic whack-a-mole 3D game. Once you complete this assignment, don't forget to save it and then turn it into your teacher.